Hello and welcome to another edition of an English guy watching wrestling. I'm the English guy, I'm Nick. Thank you so much for clicking on another video. Clicking on another video. <laughs> I'll say it right. <laughs> uh, and this one we're going to be covering the 6th of March 2021 edition of AEW Dark. The last AEW show before Revolution, which is today, the 7th of March. I'm really looking forward to it. But with that being said, let's get into it. Now, the list I have is not the matches in order of what happened on the card, but I'm going to go through them anyway. So here we go. First time we've ever done it that way, actually. Actually done like... They're not in order. It's how I usually do it, but I'm not doing it this time, so there you go. But anyway, here we go. <laughs> we had Dark Orders number 5 and 10 versus Very Morales and LeBron Cozone. This was a fun tag match, and I really do like the Dark Order. They're one of my favourite factors in all wrestling right now. And they certainly proved what they can do, and they just seem to click with everyone right now, obviously with negative one, being able to be the leader. It's just so much fun to what they do, and Very Morales, and I know a little bit about, I think he's a good Good wrestler. LeBron Cozone, I don't know much about. But it was a fun little tag match to be fair. I enjoyed it. And it was really good to see Dark Order continue the momentum and obviously get a win before because they entered, entered so, into the AEW Casino Battle Royale. Sorry, not Battle Royale, Casino Battle Royale, Battle Royale. And the winner of the Battle Royale tag team match gets a shot at the AEW tag team titles. And they're in it. So, so are um, John Silver and Andrew Reynolds there. So Dark Order have got a bit of an advantage going with two of their teams going into it. So this game, I'm looking forward to that battle. It's going to be fun, but this is a fun little tag match. And then we had we had also had Thunder Rosa versus Tesha Price. Thunder Rosa <coughs> unfortunately did lose in the semi-finals of the American brackets. So yeah, semi-final of the American bracket to Nyla Rose. <coughs> and this was actually a decent women's match, not the longest women's match. But a decent women's match. Thunder Rosa is as reliable as they come. Tessa Price is only a third appearance in AEW, but what she's shown so far has been impressive too. And Thunder Rosa winning was the right call, I think. She's very, such a great wrestler, and she's probably the best wrestlers in the female division, uh, women's division right now. And it's always great to see, so thumbs up. I mean, give thumbs up to the first match. I always give thumbs up to everyone involved, so there you go. <laughs> we also had Jack Evans versus Jake St. Patrick, who... Every time I see Jason Patrick in AEW, on AEW television, he gets better and better. I do like him. Jack Evans <clears throat> is honestly one of the best high flies in the world. Also one of the most athletic wrestlers in, on the planet. And it's always great to see him. He's been going for so long, Jack Evans, but continues to wrestle like he did what, 15, 20 years ago. He has been going that long. And that's just Jack Evans as Jack Evans. He's always reliable to watch. One of the, say, one of the best high flies in the world still. And he's great to watch. I really like Jack Evans. And I've met him a few times. Very, very nice guy too. So, But this was a fun fun match to be fair. I enjoyed this exchanges between these two as well. Jason Patrick was starting to show a little bit more than he usually does in AEW television. So this was a lot of fun. So this was actually a good match. I enjoyed it. So thumbs up to both men in this one. Actually, remember to do a thumbs up. So. <laughs> we also had Lance Archer versus John Skyler. This was, <clears throat> I think, the sh one of the shortest matches on the whole card. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Lance Archer, of course, is part of the face of the Revolution ladder match. Uh, Revolution. <coughs> and I knew him winning the match in quick succession, we say, quick fashion. <coughs> to me. That's the right thing to do. And he's, it's, as recently I've seen him on AEW television, Lance Archer is getting better and better. I think he's great. After his fantastic match with Ray Phoenix not too long ago, Dynamite 2, be part of the ladder match. He's just getting better and better. And he's been going for a long time. He's always been good, but recently he's been going even further, and I love to see it. So I really hope Lance Archer keeps on building that momentum because he's really shown what he can do. And it's great to watch, so definitely a thumbs up for that. And then we had, I'm not saying, my match of the night. It was Penta L0, L0 versus Zero Miero versus Azriel. Now, I'm not, I might be wrong, but I think this was the same Azriel that has been going for a long time in wrestling. I think he was trained by Homicide. If I'm wrong on that, then I understand. So I apologize. But I think it's the same guy. Same, I'm not sure if it's exactly the same spelling because I think he's supposed to be different. It looked like him a little bit, to be honest. But this was a stunning match, to be fair. And I loved it. Uh, Pensa, his first match back on AEW television for a while after not being at AEW because of visa issues, for what I've heard, which is unfortunate, but he is as good as they come. As we all really did some great stuff in this match too. This was a superb match back and forth between the two of them. And as I said, if it is the same as Riel, there's a miss of touch. Because I saw him back a long time ago. If it's the same one, he was great then. 
great now. And this was honestly one of the best matches in AEW Dark I've seen for a while. But some great Lucha Libre action and Penta performing like he was like his heart, his heart dependent. I say his life dependent on it, and he was amazing in this match. As we all and his AEW debut, I'm sure it's his debut, showed great, great determination and great stuff. So I can't really fault either man for this match. Penta winning was the right call, and this was, as I said, an absolutely stunning match. You, you really need to see this one. This was great from both men, so I really couldn't fault it. So definite thumbs up for this one. We also had the Natural Nightmares versus Pretty Peter Avron and Cesar Bernardi, and this was the opening match <coughs> on AEW Dark. And I absolutely loved the entrance with Caesar Bononi and Peter Avalon. Caesar Bononi came out first. <clears throat> Peter Avalon wasn't beside him. Peter went, one minute, and he gets a rope or chain, I'm not sure it was, and pulled out Peter Avalon. Have you ever seen Peter Avalon? He's got that heart shaped, um, I would say bed, shall we say, or mat, whatever you want to call it, being pulled out of wheels. I just laughed my head off. I thought it was amazing. And I can't help but absolutely love these two. And they're starting to really play off each other a little bit here and there. This was no exception. I loved it. And the Natural Nightmares, I think, also part of the tag team battle royal, picked up a fairly quick win. And, you know, great to see QT Marshall back in AEW television <clears throat> after his um, time away. And you can always rely on Dustin Rhodes. I've been watching him for years. He's just reliable as they come. So, thumbs up. This was, this was a fun little opener. We had the Gun Club of Austin and Colton Gunn versus D3 and Lombardi. And again, a fairly quick match. I will say this, the Gun Club, without Billy Gunn, not had a tag team for just these two for quite some time. But this was a fun little tag match, I enjoyed it. Um, quite a quick win for the Gun Club, but it was, it was a lot of fun. I mean, they are entertaining as you could possibly get, and you can't help but really like them. And they seem to really get more and more entertaining each week as little things they do. And fun little tag match, so... All good. Tay Conte versus Layla Gray making her AEW debut. I've never seen it before, but for what the things that Gray did was very good. And Tay Conte, you know, I've said it before, is arguably the most improved female wrestler in AEW. <clears throat> and has been for some time. She's getting better and better and better as time goes on. As I said, she did some really hard hitting and unique kicks in this match. Obviously, she has that judo background as well, so she does have. You know, a bit of martial arts uh, prowess to offense, offense, I should say. But this was actually a good match too. I enjoyed it. And Tay Conte again is just showing what she can do, and she proved it here. So thumbs up. And for what Gray did in her debut was good too. If she comes back, we'll be against it. So there you go. We will say Ricky Starks and Brian Cave is Angel Fashion and Fuego Del Sol. Now. This was a quick tag match, and of course, Ricky Starks and Brian Cage have a big match at AEW Revolution against Darby Allen and Sting in a street fight. And that's going to be very interesting to watch. Sting's first match in many years. Um, but obviously, Sting is Sting. He can always pull out the bag. He may not be as quick as he used to be, but it's the icon. He's a legend. I've always liked Sting, and it's going to be great to see him back in the ring again. And Darby Allen, of course, is perhaps the most popular wrestler in all in AEW because of what he does and how he does it against Brian Cage, who is, I think, arguably the strongest man in all AEW, and man's ridiculous and machine. Ricky Starks is going to be a good match. Um, back to this match, though, on Dark. It was a short tag match, and I'm going to say, I really, really, really want to see Fuego Del Sol get a win eventually in AEW, because I just can't help but absolutely love him. Um, but this is a short tag match. Ricky Starks and Brian Cage picked up the win after the drill, a very impressive drill claw by Brian Cage. <coughs> And it was a fun match, so there you go. We also had Chuck Taylor versus J.D. Drake. Now, I've put over J.D. Drake before. I think he's great, and every time, every time I've seen him, he's always been impressive. And he's starting to show more and more of what I've seen him do in AEW recently, and that's great because he can go. He's, you know, I'm not sure how long he's been wrestling, but he can go, and he proved it in this one. And Chuck Taylor... Is one of the most reliable wrestlers AEW have got. He's been going for so so long, but this was actually a, a good match, a very very good match. I'll give this. I'm saying this one of my joint matches on the Penta versus Azriel matches of the night. This was a good match to be fair, and JD Drake once again showing he is that good when he wants to be. And I really wouldn't mind seeing more of him AEW. I've said I've said it before, and I'll say it again. He seems to be getting those chances in AEW. So definite thumbs up for JD. Also for Chuck Taylor, 
managed to hit the awful waffle on a guy of his size, Jamie Drake's size was impressive, to be fair. But this was a fun, good match. I enjoyed this one. And, you know, both men really had a good match in this one, so definitely a thumbs up to both of them. We also had Bear Country, who are also parts of the AEW Tag Team Battle Royal, versus Kevin Stewart and Ryzen. Now, Kevin Stewart, I've never seen him before. And it's a bit of an unusual mix match between him and Ryzen. Ryzen's a big guy, not sure. Got the red, I think it's sort of Mohawk. Plays like a, a, a priest character. Cameron Stewart came in with glasses on. It looked like a, a professor, a, a, maybe a science student that was trying to, not in a coat or anything, but as a kind of like a, like, not like, not say librarian, but you know, a philosopher, I'd say a philosophical character in his, his, his glasses. The way he looked, it was great. But this was actually. A good match too, and Bear Country are as reliable as they come these days. I mean, they've really, I think they found a new home in AEW. If they continue doing what they're doing, they're just going to keep on rising and rising and rising. And I like to see it because I do like Bear Country. They're different. They've got a very unique uh, gimmick, but it works, and they work so well together. And the big, like, shall we say, big bruisers, shall we say, that's kind of an apt description of them. But they're just really good too, and I like them. I think AEW. If they don't sign them soon, I think they may miss a trick on them because I think they've got real, 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 real potential to have some great tag matches with some of the best talents in AEW. But they have found a place here, I think. They've, they've been great since they've been debuted. So, fun, fun tag match. And Bear Country picks up the win. And it leaves us with the main event, the Seidel brothers of Mike and Matt Seidel versus Chaos Project. And this was a good main event, to be fair. And the Seidel brothers picked up their first win as a tag team. And as I said it before, and I'll say it again, you can't really go wrong with Mac and Mike's, Matt Seidel. He's been one of my favourite wrestlers for a long, long time. He's fantastic. And it's great to see you know, Mike get more opportunities. He can go as well, to be fair. And Chaos Projects are one of the most entertaining tag teams in all wrestling right now because obviously <laughs> Luther Hughes into a pentacle as a weapon. It's just entertaining to watch. Kind of similar here and here and there, but... It was fun, a fun tag match, and this was a good match to make main event. What was a, actually quite a decent episode of Dark this week, and a great TV episode to lead into tonight's pay per view, which I think a lot of people are going to be watching because of some of the matches announced. And obviously, that main event is, I think, what a lot of people are wondering what exactly is going to happen. Obviously, the barbed wire exploding death match. I'm curious to see because I don't think I've ever seen it happen in North America. It's happened in Japan many times. But this is, if this is going to be first, it's going to be, not for the face of heart, but it's going to be entertaining. But that is it for this review. Thank you so much for watching. We do appreciate it. And I'll see you next time. So until that time, everybody, take care.